Good morning, everyone. You're here for the Morning Mindset. It is exactly 8 o'clock Pacific time. Thank you for joining me this morning. It's Thursday, and uh, as many of you know, this is one of the better days to get focused on making sales. And if I would to give an opinion, I would say it's probably the best day as far as days of the week are concerned. And so we're going to talk a little bit specifically today about a subject that I think is very important for any salesperson to really understand. So obviously we talk about a lot of stuff here on the mindset. If you're new to the mindset, get a pen, get a notebook. We're gonna talk about a subject today. We talk about a subject every day that I hope really does help you with your day, with whether you're working in a business, whether you're working as a sales professional, whatever it may be. We try to cover subjects that do have uh, quite a bit of value to them. So yesterday I mentioned a gentleman, his name is Steven Skiffman and he is an author. Um, he hasn't really written a lot of recent books, so you're not going to see him publishing his stuff on Facebook, trying to get, get the uh, the free plus shipping in order to get get his book like Cardone would be. <laughs> but he is one of my favorite sales trainers, and he came up with a concept in one of his chapters um, in cold calling techniques that I think is very important. I teach this to almost all the sales guys that work for me in-house. And it's something that I try to live by a little bit. And it's also something that will help you culture the way you manage your sales and the way you manage your conversations. Um, as we've talked about in previous uh, mindsets, there's a lot to sales. You got to be able to understand your product. You got to be able to listen more than you talk. You have to look for the opportunities to present. And then there's also the inevitable reality that many people are going to tell you no. Yesterday we talked about pipeline development. If you're going to get 30 calls in, one person's going to call, you got 29 to 29 denials. Well, the way Steve Skiffman puts it, and I don't know how accurate this is, I just really like it metaphorically, is that one third of people are going to buy from you. Okay, they're going to buy from you because they simply are looking for what you have. Okay, they need what you have. They've uh, maybe even contacted you or you're part of a boardroom meeting that happened last week and you're the answer. But one third of people are not gonna buy at all because they're too busy. Maybe they're closing their business down. Maybe they don't have the money. Maybe the timing's really bad. And he always talks about this additional third that is the difference between a good and a great salesperson. A great salesperson is gonna pick up that additional third. So there's gonna get two thirds of his audience instead of that one third that are just looking for the product. And in the middle are the, are the ones that may buy or they may not buy. Maybe they do or they don't need your product. Maybe they do or they don't need your service. And this is where you've got to get into the dialogue to change the way they're seeing things in order to facilitate them wanting to buy. And so in the middle, that's where the great salespeople come in, is the ones that can convert that additional third. Again, a third's gonna buy because they need it, a third's not gonna buy because they can't. And you've got that third in the margin in the middle that could, may buy, and should buy, but you gotta talk them into it, right? You gotta, you gotta present it properly. You gotta really bring out the value proposition. Well, in the midst of that one third, you're gonna run into rebuttals. Okay, reasons they can't buy, reasons it's not a good time. And I can tell you, people sell to me all, all the time, right? They look me up, they consider maybe I need services or products, I end up on the phone with them. Data sales people especially, <laughs> if you believe it, I, I call one data company, I'm telling you, those, those are some aggressive folks. And I'll usually get blown up by them at least two or three times a week after I just ask if they've got a certain set of data I'm looking for. <laughs> so, you need to learn what a rebuttal actually is, okay? So learning to rebuttal, and look at my two there. Let me fix that. Obviously, there shouldn't be that big gap. There we go. Okay, so learning to rebuttal is less a science and more of an art. So there is a little bit of science to it, right? That says if they, have a refusal or if they give a reason not to buy from you or why it's not a good time or why it doesn't fit their company 
maybe you're selling technology and, and, and they've gotten along just fine without technology for quite some time. You know, they're making good money now. They don't necessarily need to look into things and they don't want to change the way they're doing things because it might, might might disrupt the dynamic of their of their um, customer base. <coughs> There's a lot of reasons they may bring to you. But learning to rebuttal is less a science, more of an art. And it's coined off of one specific phrase. Okay, um, I've got books and books of rebuttals, really good ones. I've written a lot myself for my salespeople. You know, nice clean sheet that gives the intro and everything else they need, and then two pages of rebuttals. If they they say this, then say this. If they say this, then say this. But the reality is, is a really good salesperson understands this one golden rule. Okay, this is a golden rule. Whatever they say. That is the reason to set the appointment, move the sale forward, or set the next call. Now, that's a, it's kind of an odd statement to make, but it is the one statement that you want to write in your mind, okay? Um, another popular um, phrase by uh, um, Skiffman is the first no is never the, never the real no, right? It's that second no. And that one I had to really think about for a little bit because I'm not there saying no. His point is they may not be clear. People are quick to say no, all right? They may not understand exactly what you're offering. So whatever they say, that is the reason to set the, the appointment, move the sale uh, forward, or set the next call. So why, why am I calling this process more of an art? Because you don't know what they're going to say. You have to listen very closely, okay? Oh, uh, you know, last quarter was really hard. Maybe we can take a look at this next quarter. Well, listen, that's the reason I want to get you guys on the phone with, for this discovery, because whatever you guys may have been struggling through, we might be able to grease that wheel quickly. We really don't have the money for something like this right now. Listen, what we're here to do is to help you make more money immediately. That's what our programs are going to actually help your company do. So I, I get it. I understand that right now you're in a pinch. Let's see if we can't get something figured out, though, so we can participate in make, making you guys more money. Let's get you onto the discovery call. Right? So if you see what I'm doing, it doesn't matter what they say. Okay? It doesn't matter at all. Okay? Hey, we're, we're, we're actually looking at potentially just shutting the company down. Okay? We did terrible last year. Um, the owner quit. And the president took over, and and we're just we're struggling right now. Well, listen, we'd love to participate in figuring out how to keep you guys in place. Okay, we might have some great advice for you. Okay, we work with a lot of companies. We've seen them become successful. A lot of the reasons is because they've adapted to our to our services or programs. Let's let's hurry and get on this call. Let's just see if maybe we can participate in helping you guys get back on your feet. So there's not really a rebuttal that they could give that is going to be standardized enough that you can't use this diction. Okay, let's use another one. We've already got stuff. Okay, we've already got the software platform in place here. You guys may have some stuff, but we're really happy with what we have. Okay, well, listen, that's one of the reasons why we need to talk because we've heard this before. And the reality is we've got stuff that's new. Okay, stuff that will help departments in your company that aren't actually being accessible to you right now when it comes to the CRM management that you're doing. Okay, so the, the fact that you're satisfied with software, that's a good thing. That means you guys are using software. We just want to show you how by adapting to our system, it may be much better for your company. Let's get a discovery call set. When you're on a call and you're having the dialogue, you're listening to them talk, you've got your pitch, you're trying to figure out where to put the value proposition on the table. The other thing that you really gotta be cognizant of is that it's more than likely going to end on that conversation with a no pass. If you're making 30 calls and one of those calls is a sale, 29 of them aren't. So you've got 29 chances to practice this formula to bring them back to the table, to get them onto the call, to keep them in the conversation. And you just got to remember this formula. And then what makes this more of an art is you don't know what they're going to say. All you know is that you've got to come up with an answer 
in your rebuttal path that's correct based off of what they did say. So whatever they say, that is the reason to set the appointment, move the cell forward, or set up the next call. Okay, man, I am just way too busy right now. I think I'm going to be way too busy this week. And, and you know, maybe we can talk about this in like six months. Okay, listen, I'd love to participate in streamlining things. So, of course, you'll stay busy. You sound like you're a busy person. Busy people stay busy. Okay, but I'd like to streamline the efforts that you're making, and I believe our programs can do that. That's the reason I want to talk to you now as opposed to later. Okay, if after we do the review, you feel like it's something we need to do later, then, then you at least you'll have the information and you can make a good decision. Okay, how about Friday at 2 o'clock? Okay, so that's another thing that's actually very valuable is when you get to a certain point with the conversation, make some suggestions and always make more than one. I can do Friday at 2 o'clock or, hey, if you're busy Friday, um, I've got a couple times open on Monday. How about either Friday 2 or about Monday at 3 o'clock? Let's at least get, on, get something on the calendar so I can show you what we got, All right? Don't walk away from an opportunity to rebuttal for two reasons. Number one, you'll get better, okay? There is nobody on earth that's going to make you better at rebuttals than the guy that's absolutely not going to buy, <laughs> okay? If you want to hone your skills, that's where you hone your skills is with the guy that's just absolutely no way they're going to buy from you. And many of you have gone through that process. but don't be shy to rebuttal. You have to do it. If you're in sales, you've got to figure out how to turn conversations around. You have to figure out how to try to stick to the measure. Okay. I have sales guys all the time call me and I'm like, look, man, this is not something I'm going to do right now. Okay. It's just not, it's just not something I'm going to do. Okay. Now, now if I was to call myself because I'm short and I want to get off the phone, I'm a busy guy. I'd say, listen, you're obviously too busy to review this, but one thing that we both have to admit is you don't know what I'm offering, okay? So I don't want to take up a bunch of your time, but if I can keep this to a nice, clean 20-minute introduction, can I meet with you this Friday? So you've got to make it a habit. Rebuttaling's a habit, and it's not a science. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't go read through some incredible rebuttals, Okay. And get, in fact, I've got a couple books I really like, and it, all they are is just rebuttals. If they say this, then here's your answer. If they say this, then here's your answer. That's going to give you some good practice on at least talking through a potential rebuttal if you're, if you're practicing with somebody. But you need to listen very closely to anything they're saying and figure out how to make that the reason they need to meet with you. Okay, this is a, this is a powerful, powerful tool. And I've never heard anybody talk about this but Stephen Skiffman, and he was quite quite a substantial sales trainer for some time. Um, and so whatever they say, that is the reason to set the appointment, move the sale forward, or set the next call. Okay? If you use this formula, you will find that it becomes easier and easier and easier to be able to keep people in the discussion to stop them from cutting you off, cutting you short, telling you no, okay? And once you get really good at this, you'll notice that you might even have a couple of frustrated people that are gonna tell you no, but man, they can't figure out how to get, get off the phone with you, <laughs> all right? Almost everything comes out of their mouth somehow turns around for a reason for them to get back on the phone with you, okay? And a really good salesman will appreciate that fact, okay? A really busy business owner may not. <laughs> it just really depends. So practice this, practice this, practice this. Okay. If you've got a teammate, if you've got a friend, just get on the phone and tell them, listen, I need you to tell me no in every possible way you can tell me no. Okay. You're too busy. Your company's out of money. We've already got software. Okay. There's no way we would ever buy this service. We tried this last year. We lost a lot of money. Okay, there's so many different things that you're going to hear in that discussion path. And practice with somebody. Practice turning every single one of them around. Okay, and again, it's an art. And many of you that have graduated college know that you can get a degree in a, in a science degree or an arts degree, and it's almost all the same classes. 
So yes, there is a science to this, okay? But if I was to break down that science, it would be very specifically this statement. Whatever they say, that's the reason to set the next appointment, move the cell forward, or set the next call. Okay, it doesn't matter what they say. Okay, now it could be something that uh, is difficult for you to do at first. So here I am talking about, you know, just whatever they say, turn it around. It may seem a little difficult for you because you'll be sitting here with this principle in your brain and feeling a little bit nervous, like, man, if they tell me no, they're going to, okay, I'm going to remember what Beto said. You just want to follow the same diction we've been talking about in the rest of our conversations. Just listen to everything they're saying. Let them talk a lot because you're going to come up with five or six points that will help you at this, at this time. Well, Beto, I know you said this may be a, a, a next quarter thing for you guys, but listening to you talk about your business, I'm realizing that, that there's some challenges that you'd presented to me that we may be able to show how we would have solved those for you. And if you're moving into the next quarter without us, you know, I, I'm, I'm a little worried that maybe you're just not going to at least going to have the information about how we could have helped you and how we can help you further. Yeah, I'm just asking for 20 to 30 minutes of your time. Okay, so, and again, there's there's a lot of stuff out there. I'll even probably even send you guys some suggestions on some books I really like. I'm not currently in front of my library. I just pull them off and, you know, name them off to you. But, I mean, for rebuttals in general. So, this is the rule. Keep it close to the vest. I've been in sales 18 years. And, I, man, I believe I read this book probably super early on. We're talking 2002, 2003, I probably had my hands on this book. And so the reality is this will help you a ton. Whatever they say, that is the reason to set the, the appointment, move the cell forward, or set the next call. Okay, the cool thing about this is now you don't have to be nervous about when to rebuttal and how to rebuttal. If they don't want to do what you're asking them to do, period, whatever it might be, end of story. They don't want to get on the next call. They don't want to. They don't. They don't want to play that tourniquet model where you're trying to get them to even get into a discovery today or tomorrow, right? They don't want to play ball the way you need them to in order to move them forward in the sales cycle that makes the most sense for you to keep your number solid, right? If they don't want to do exactly what it is that you're looking to do, you're going to be going into some form of a rebuttal. Okay, you're going to have to try to talk them into doing something that's a little outside the school of what they're talking about doing. Even if it sounds really good, but I really can't talk to you for six weeks. That's someone who's actually probably gonna buy or potentially really looking at it. But you want them to talk to you on Monday. So even in that situation, you're looking at a potential rebuttal. Okay, well, I'd hate for you to really miss out on what this could do for your business. Okay, a lot of times salespeople will have specials. Well, you're, you're going to miss out on the special. If you're working for a company that offers certain discounts by the end of the month, that kind of stuff, let me tell you something, that never works. <clears throat> Unless they're guaranteed going to buy and they do want to get in early because they're guaranteed going to buy, which is rare because you're not done in the discussion path with them yet, don't try to throw that stuff out. And, you know, and that's just a little tidbit that I'm adding to today's call because that doesn't work. What works is valuation of how early your adaption to your products or services are going to make them more successful with their business. Okay, you have to be that convinced that them getting in as early as possible, today if possible, is going to change the landscape of how successful they are with their business in whatever solution you offer and whatever department it solves just be convinced of that okay so that's what happens in a dialogue in between a professional salesperson and a potentially one third of that of that demographic that may or may not buy relationship is that salesperson understands this rule whether that rule's written on paper or whether he's even heard of Steven Skiffman he knows or she knows that that conversation may lead to a discussion that they don't want to see happen and they've got to turn it around. Okay, whatever they say is the reason to set the appointment, move the cell forward or set the next call. 
Rebuttaling will become easy. You will become a top level professional in sales faster than you could ever imagine if you just follow this rule. Okay. So learning to rebuttal is less a science, more of an art. It's an art. You've got to listen. You've got to plan. You've got to hear what they say. You've got to, you've got to flip that around and give that to be the reason that they need to meet with you. So you can practice, but you also got to realize you're not going to read this rebuttal out of a book verbatim. You've got to tailor it every single time to every conversation. All right, let's get out there and make it a good day. Let's make some sales today. Okay, it's a great sales day. Would love to see you guys get out there and close some deals. And I thank you for being here today. Let's get some fire in our cups. It's a great day today to make sales, everybody. I'm going to repeat that. Okay, if you're working on sales, call your people back today. Thursday's your best day. All right, have an incredible rest of your day, and we will talk again tomorrow morning.